All right, welcome everybody. I have with me a special guest. His name is Dan, and he's from the World Astrology Report YouTube channel. So Dan, thanks so much for coming. Thanks for having me. So I wanted to talk today about Pluto in Aquarius. And if you didn't know already, Pluto went into Aquarius on March 23rd, and we're seeing a lot happen worldwide with the current events. Um, so a general overview of Pluto is it transforms whatever sign it goes into, where Pluto just came out of Capricorn, came into Aquarius, and now it's going to retrograde back into Capricorn on June 11th. And so I guess basically what themes have you been seeing with uh, Pluto and Aquarius so far? We can start, start diving into that. Sure. Well, I think one of the, one of the most obvious and loudest themes that really came up um, was the, the explosion of AI. Yeah. You know, I mean, Aquarius is a sign that's associated with technology and um, a lot of astrologers have been associating Pluto and Aquarius with, with the rise of AI for a long time before it actually happened. But it was just quite amazing to, to see, like, particularly I think it was March, when suddenly it just, ex you know, the, the theme exploded. Yeah. Suddenly everybody's talking about it and suddenly we could actually see, oh, this is real and this is really gonna transform things. Like it w I think before that, you know, people, a lot of people were like, AI, sure, yeah, that, that's, that's a, a big deal, no doubt. But nobody would really, it was, I don't think it, we really kind of were that convinced of it necessarily. We hadn't really seen a demonstration of its power and in around you know, in March, suddenly it just all it all happened. If you were online at that time, it was all anybody was talking about, and um, we had these really vivid demonstrations of the power of this technology. And it was it was kind of like um, it sort of just became clear that things are really going to change, and and this technology is going to have a lot to do with it. Absolutely, um, yeah. And Aquarius kind of brings in new technology. That's kind of based one of the main things of Aquarius. I also think of the, the internet as well, kind of like a worldwide web. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, the, the, the web is extremely Aquarian. Yeah. Um, you know, Aquarius uh, is a sign that um, it's ruled by the planet Saturn. Um, Mercury is, is rather strong with Aquarius. It has triplicity rulership of Aquarius. And Mercury is the planet of uh, of the of the mind of intelligence, um, Saturn is structure, and so with the with the web we really have a kind of a structure which uh, allows the interchange of information, and which is kind yeah. of you know, built on intelligence. Mm -hmm. So we have Pluto going into Aquarius. We've we've seen other other very interesting themes like uh, more bank collapses very similar to what we saw when Pluto ingressed into Capricorn back in, I guess it was 2007. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right when we saw the, uh, as you all know, the economic collapse, great financial collapse. Um, and so, you know, we, we saw Lehman, Bro Lehman Brothers collapse back then. And so I find it very interesting. We're seeing very similar themes. And now Pluto is gonna retrograde back into Capricorn Capricorn represents, you know, top-down structures, governments, uh, you know, big, big corporations, things like that, uh, banks. Right. So, what could we see more of with uh, Pluto retrograding back into Capricorn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting question. Um, what's, uh, you know, Pluto's gonna gonna, gonna take uh, another eighteen months or so to to really move into Aquarius. Mm. So it, yeah. it is, as you say, it's moving back into Capricorn. It's going to move back into Aquarius and then back into Capricorn again. And then finally back into Aquarius in November 2024. Yeah. So there's this sort of transitional phase. So Pluto's business in Capricorn, in that sign, are associated with these institutions that you mentioned, with the establishment, with banking and so on. Pluto hasn't finished its business there. Yeah. Um, and as you say, we're certainly seeing the signs of another big crisis brewing at the moment. Um, yeah. They've almost been able to paper over, paper over the holes 
so far. <laughs> but you know, there's lots of. I mean, there's there are lots of people saying that there are a lot of, of financial institutions that aren't um, on on firm ground now, and we've only yeah. really seen the the tip of the iceberg so far uh, in terms of in terms of the institutions that that have have collapsed. We, I would not be at all surprised to see um, a wider crisis breaking out while you know in this this period with Pluto moving back into Capricorn and kind of finishing its business there, which, as you say, began with the, the big crisis of 2008, yeah. uh, the banking crisis. Um, the other interesting thing is, is, is that uh, we saw, as you say, we saw with Pluto in Aquarius, we saw this fresh crisis, um, but it concerned, uh, it was centered around um, Silicon Valley Bank yeah. what we saw before which is you know we can see the Aquarian theme there right this is uh, this is a bank that served the tech industry so even though it was it's kind of we're still in the territory of kind of what looking at a crisis with the banking system there was a much more like Aquarian kind of shade to it this time around absolutely absolutely um, and it was also crypto related I believe because you know which, which is technology Aquarius um, because the the reserves from the the circle uh, corporation that owns uh, USD coin uh, a lot of their reserves I believe 10% or maybe yeah around 10% were in Silicon Valley Bank um, and actually when we saw that bank start to collapse uh, the the USD coin depegged down to I think about 80. 86 cents. So it might have been it might have been actually 14% of the reserve something like that um, And there are you know, so there could be a reason why it was bailed out maybe to maybe to save USD coin like there's there's some uh, Conspiracy theories around that of uh, you know, if USD coin is is going to be a big player for the long run um, You know, but then it also bailed out all of the tech companies as well <laughs> um, so like you said, we're going to see a lot more themes of that. We're just getting, we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. So uh, I'm definitely on the uh, edge of my chair, at the edge of my seat. Um, so yeah, and then also you, you mentioned intensity. So Pluto is squaring the nodes, right, and is going to continue for a while. And then we just saw the the T square with Jupiter squaring Pluto and Mars. Right. What do you think about that? <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Um, so uh, the the two points that are square to the lunar nodes are critical points, really. Um, you know, the the two lunar nodes. These are the eclipsing points. These have a lot to do with you know where where change is really taking place, and the 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 two points that are square to the north and south node of the moon. These are called the bendings. Right. We have the north yeah. and south bending. Um, these are also very potent, uh, potent points. We can think of the nodes as the head and tail of the dragon. Um, yeah. we, the, the points that are square to those nodes are kind of points of where, where the sort of direction and polarity changes almost. Um, that's where we find Pluto right now. It's at the south bending. Um, I've done a fair bit of research on what's happened when Pluto has been at the bendings, at the north and south bendings. And um, I definitely saw that there was a lot of volatility, particularly in terms of power structures when Pluto's at these points, because Pluto, as you said, it has to do with intensity, it has to do with power. Pluto is the lord of the underworld. It has to do with, um, with kind of titanic forces that, that come from beneath the earth. Mm. or from beneath the visible sphere. Um, and we really see with Pluto at the bendings, there are a lot of changes in power structures. There are lots of uh, power grabs. I saw coups yeah. happening over and over again. A lot of military coups in various countries all around the world. Uh, too many to be kind of just a simple kind of coincidence. It was just very striking when I look back at history, looked at what happened at the times when Pluto's like very close to the nodes like it is now a lot of power grabs and, and changes in direction. Um, and, you know, we, right now, as you say, we have this, this uh, 
this configuration with Pluto opposing Mars, squared by Jupiter, and, and this, this configuration is also aligned with the, node, um, with the, with the bendings and the mm. nodal axis. Um, and it's interesting, you know, even in the last uh, couple of days, uh, we seemingly had some kind of important development in the Ukraine conflict where the Russians were saying that they'd taken Bakhmut, this, this you know, town that the, the Russians and Ukrainians have been fighting over for months and months. You know, it's been probably the most intense and longest running battle of the whole conflict. There's been a kind of sort of development, a change in direction maybe there. At the same time though, um, Ukraine is now going to be getting F-16s and Ukrainian pilots are going to be trained in F-16s by the US and its allies. So there's kind of, you can kind of see that there's some really important developments happening. Um, and Pluto is going to be at this point at the south bending for quite a while longer this year, actually until within three degrees of the south bending until the middle of October. Um, so that's quite a long time. And um, I'm expecting that we'll see more um, power grabs. Um, I also see, have seen a lot of like long, ru long running leaders, uh, their rule often ends uh, with Pluto at this point or at the nodes themselves. Mm. Um, there's an interesting seeming, something interesting going on in Thailand right now oh, yeah. um, where, where uh, the, the uh, Move Forward party has just won the election. Um, the, the current prime minister, Prayut Janocha, took power about nine years ago, um, one half of the nodal cycle as well, um, and he took mm. power in a coup. And now seemingly he may well be out of, out of power and um, a new sort of younger generation are gonna take over. It's not mm. for certain, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. That's somewhere that I'm watching quite closely, but I think it, we'll see that in other places as well, probably changing changes in, in leadership and switches. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, I also want to talk with you about the, what this video is about. The title is uh, the, the phase, phase one of Pluto going into Aquarius. And this is based on the bounds, which, which I'm learning from you. The, what is it, the five bounds right, of the, uh, each sign. Yeah, the Egyptian, Egyptian bounds, or they also are also called the Egyptian terms. Okay. Um, terms or bounds. Um, each of the uh, signs in traditional astrology was divided into these five sections called bounds or terms. And the five sections uh, were different lengths. So yeah. you could have a, a bound that's five degrees and then one that's eight degrees and one that's three degrees. And you know, the, the, each of the signs is divided differently. And each of the bounds is ruled by one of the traditional planets except for the luminaries. So it would be ruled by either Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Mars, or Saturn. Mm. So each of those planets rules one of the bounds, one of the five bounds of each sign. Um, now these bounds, you know, wh where do they come from? Uh, why are they the sizes that they are? We don't really know. This is one of the, this is a mystery of astrology. It's kind of lost to time. We don't know why the bounds are divided as they are, um, but, all the traditional astrologers going back to the Hellenistic period pretty much almost without exception used these bounds like and, and not just use them but they were held to be very important you know, astrologers would say um, a planet in its own bound so say Mercury and Mercury's bound is as strong as, a, as it is uh, in its own sign well so they, they, they weren't just you know some uh, some unimportant appendage to astrology they were very core and I, I did some research into uh, Pluto moving through these bounds. You know, Pluto moves very slowly. It takes uh, you know, a couple of decades to go through a sign sometimes, as we, as we will see with Aquarius. Um, but it also moves through these bounds. And something that I saw uh, when researching Pluto's progress through the bounds of Capricorn and Aquarius is that Pluto, or what Pluto seems to signify, uh, seems to change depending on the bound that it's in. The character of the Plutonian events of transformation changes depending on, on which bound Pluto's in. Now, the first bound of both Capricorn and 
Aquarius is ruled by Mercury. Yeah. You know, Mercury is a planet associated with trade and negotiation and communication, and business and interpretation. At least kind of these are sort of mercurial themes. And what's, what's really interesting is how um, Pluto moved into Capricorn and therefore into the Mercury bound of Capricorn in 2008. And then we had that financial crisis. And of course, Mercury is the planet of markets, of trade, of business. Um, and then once again, we've seen this year when Pluto moved into the Mercury bound of Aquarius, we again saw like, problems with the markets, another financial crisis, but this one with, more, as we said earlier, with more of an Aquarian flavor. Mm. It was, you know, the theme of like Silicon Valley was brought in and cryptocurrency was kind of, was very relevant to what was happening. But Pluto's in this Mercury bound. So the transformative stuff that we're likely to see is going to uh, be very like colored by mercurial themes. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot with, with, with trade and also, you know, I think of social media, like communications, um, AI, you know, it's the way I've been using AI is, is communicating with it, you know, sending a prompt and then having AI spit, you know, whatever copy back to me or a question or an answer to the question I'm asking, um, you know, definitely markets, um, so there's many themes and also ideas like ideas about you could say humanity Aquarius I, I think there's going to be a lot to dis be discovered about um, new ideas about humanity like I don't know maybe where we came from and, and who, who, who actually are we <laughs> there, there might be new discoveries uh, about humanity um, but definitely new ideas uh, socially you know we're seeing a lot of of that come out of uh, social issues, right? You know, globally, um. right? There's there's a there's a sort of uh, revelatory um, aspect uh. to Pluto. You know, Pluto is the underworld, and it, it often seems to have a, to do with like the invisible suddenly becoming visible. You know, like a volcanic eruption. There's, there was mm. great power under the surface; wow. we couldn't see it, and then suddenly it's there, and it's completely transforming things wow and that's that's a theme that we see over and over again with pluto and now pluto's in aquarius as you say you know it's a sign of, kind of associated with uh huma humanity or humanitarianism um with systems with how the world is structured and so we can expect to see revelations um in those areas you know, Aquarius is a sign that has to do with, or is often associated with, um, with radical or new ideas. Yeah. Um, and so I think, as you say, we, we can probably expect that our, um, our vision of you know, who we are mm. um, is going to be shifted because things are going to come to the surface. They were always there, yeah. but were maybe hidden or ignored before. That would be very Pluto in Aquarius. Yeah, absolutely. Um, other things are like, um, I would say social media, like censorship on social media, um, that could be very like Mercury, um, maybe Pluto uh, trying to control the narrative like that and, and the narratives in, in uh, mainstream media potentially being controlled, things like that. Yeah, Pluto kind of also represents like cent uh, like a centralization of. It of certainly represents yeah power structures. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. power. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And elites. Right. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Um, Aquarius is a sign that's uh, it's ruled by Saturn, and it's you know it's the opposite sign to to Leo, the yeah. sun sign. So if if Leo is about the center. Um, Aquarius is more about the the margins, mm. um, and uh, Pluto will often signify kind of empowerment and shifts in power structures when it's in Aquarius. Um, what, what we often see with Pluto in Aquarius is is new centers being established. If Leo is the center. Pluto moves into Aquarius and a new center is established 
on the margins. You know, yeah. Aquarius has to do with the, the, the sort of marginal places. You know, Saturn is at the edge of the solar system. It was the, the last planet before, you know, in traditional astrology, but obviously they weren't aware of the, you know, the, the so-called modern planets, Uranus onwards. So, you know, Saturn patrolled the, the edges of, of society and the mm. edge of the cosmos. That was kind of how it was seen. So when Pluto goes into Aquarius, we often see um, new centers being established and, in pa and new sort of power centers in particular. Mm. That's something that um, you know, history shows us very clearly that happens over and over again. Like the last time Pluto was in Aquarius, we had the founding of the United States, essentially. The United States institutions were founded. Um, and the nice. United States was a new power center, you know, kind of it's broke away from the British Empire. And so when, you know, where London might have been a center, suddenly there's this new center established across the ocean. Um, you go back further than that, we have the Reformation, the Protestant Reformation. Um, in England, for example, Henry VIII makes himself head of the Church of England and breaks with Rome. There's a new sort of center established there. That mm. theme is going to play out in our, in our modern world somehow, like new centers. You could almost connect it to maybe decentralization. Yeah. You know, that's a big theme that I think is, is, is going to be loud over the next 20 years. Yeah, yeah, I definitely, yeah. Especially in Aquarius, I think of decentralized powers, like a kind of a web around the world. Um, maybe the blockchain will, will play a big part with that. Um, what did I want to mention? Yeah, in terms of uh, like power centers around the world, um, I'm learning about, you know, uh, what's his name? I'm blanking on his name right now, but uh, conversations about the new world order that's potentially going to come uh, over this next decade. Um, a, a major change in power, you know, the United States and the dollar has been uh, basically the top dog for ever since World War II, you could say. And it seems like there's a major shift in power structures and there's a lot of um, power grabs that are happening. There's, uh, you know, NGOs are coming into power like the World Economic Forum, the WHO, uh, the WEF. Uh, and uh, those are also potentially um, at least attempting to create uh, new financial systems. The, the World Economic Forum came out with a new cryptocurrency. Uh, I think it's called the Unicoin or something like that. Mm. Um, so I think there's gonna be a lot of interesting shifts in it's particularly the financial markets and uh, the reserve currency of the world. And I think it's gonna be a lot more decentralized in a way. And cryptocurrencies such as, dare I say this, uh, such as XRP could could be bridge currencies that would allow um, different governments, different countries to trade uh, their uh, centralized digital currencies uh, through that bridge currency. Um, that's just one example. Um, so I think that that has a lot of Aquarian type energy. You know, Absolutely. With all these digital currencies coming out and digital financial markets and. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think cryptocurrency is highly Aquarian. Yeah. The, the, uh, the cryptocurrency is also seemingly really tied into Pluto's movements over the last few decades. Um, yeah. You can also, yeah. you know, it was, I don't think it was a coincidence that um, Bitcoin was born when Pluto moved into Capricorn or around, uh, around, that, uh, yeah. around that time back in 2008. Um, yeah. So we have we have uh, the, the major cryptocurrency kind of coming into existence when Pluto moved into that sign, um, and now Pluto's in Aquarius. I think the theme of cryptocurrencies and, and central bank digital currencies is is going to be one of the main things we're talking about over the next twenty years. Yeah, and it's an interesting um, battle probably that we're going to see um, mm -hmm. between centralized currencies, currencies, that, you know, central bank digital currencies that are um, issued by central banks and controlled by central banks versus yep. decentralized currencies like, like Bitcoin. Um, 
And we may well see a world where both of those things are you know, able to find their niches and thrive, or we may see more likely attempts to, to uh, I would say, by states to kind of push out rivals to set their centralized currencies. Yeah. Um, and I think that, that, that whole uh, theme of, this, of centralization and decentralization is going to play out in lots of ways, um, but one of them is definitely in the, the realm of currencies. Yeah, yeah, because uh, that's that's how the world works, right? Is you know, is is money, and uh, that's kind of I think of money as like the root chakra of how things work. So it's kind of like the foundation. So um, that's one of the reasons I'm really diving deep into the financial markets and and using astrology to to guide that as well and and find patterns and themes, which I'm finding very interesting. Right. It's also interesting just to just that you know we talked about how the first um the first bound of mm -hmm. uh both capricorn and aquarius is mercury's bound and how we saw a financial crisis uh, beginning in 2008 when uh, pluto enters that bound um and you know that's been so uh, like formative for history over the past couple of decades but it's 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 interesting how often you know money does or finance economics, it does drive other developments, it does drive politics yeah. to an extent. Like, as you yeah. say, it's like the root of things. Um, when people have serious financial problems, mm -hmm. that's usually what, what really pushes them to, to try and change, change the world or change the, the system, so to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because people aren't that motivated to, to make big changes, to risk their lives, for example, to, to, to put things on the table, yeah. um, unless they're really kind of challenged financially. If you can't afford to eat, um, if you mm. can't you know, educate your children or whatever it is, you know, um, that's gonna push you to take risks and to push for, for change. So yeah. the start of the process of, you know, of, of change is often financial first. Yeah. Um, we saw that with Pluto and Capricorn and I suspect we're going to see it again uh, with mm. Pluto in Aquarius. Mm. You can also see that, as you say, like um, the, the 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 status of the dollar is being questioned. Yeah. Um, it's still the global reserve currency, vice, and it's still the most popular reserve currency and and currency of settlement by a long way. Mm. It's not something that can be changed overnight, or w that will be changed overnight. I don't think, but there is a. You can see that. Um, some of the United States' rivals, are, they're pushing uh, to, to try and end the dollar's dominance, mm -hmm. and particularly the BRICS countries. Yeah. You can see um, China's pushing its own currency, you know, the renminbi or the yuan, um, as, as an alternative. And then the BRICS countries have started to increasingly trade amongst themselves in current currencies that aren't the US dollar, which is... Which is uh, obviously suggests that they're, they, they're trying to shift things away from a, sort of a dollar dominated system. You know, the, now yep. it, 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 there, there, are, there are advantages and disadvantages to having the, the, the global reserve currency. It's not all um, advantage and mm -hmm. um, th there, are, there are burdens that have to be carried. You know, the dollar um, perhaps is higher than it would be if it wasn't a reserve currency, and that, that hurts, for example, American uh, exports and so on. So there are, like, there are penalties and mm. stuff, and I think that, that China, for example, is aware of that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you can clearly see that there, there is some push to reducing dollar dominance. And I think yeah. it maybe ties into the, the Saturn return, sorry, the, not the Saturn return, oh, yeah. the, the Pluto return of the United States. Yeah. Um, because Pluto in the United States Sibley chart, which is the chart that probably most astrologers use um, for the Declaration of Independence, mm -hmm. uh, Pluto's in the second house. In that yeah, chart. well, that makes me think about the U.S. dollar being the dominant power for so long. That makes me think of Capricorn, like top-down power structure, whereas we're heading into Aquarius, so I would not be surprised at all that this represents the U.S. dollar um, power globally you know, falling and maybe allowing more of a decentralized power structures 
uh, financially around the world. And so another reason why I'm not surprised we're seeing cryptocurrencies sprout up all around the world. Right, mm. right. Yeah, and I think, I think we're entering a, a, a multipolar era probably. Um, we've had a really exceptional kind of uh, period that we've been through where the US was really the, the, mo you know, the dominant superpower. It didn't really have an, any credible rivals. And the US dollar was obviously dominant as a global reserve currency. Um, but it seems like we're, we're, we're going to enter uh, an era where there are more likely to be m like multiple power centers. As you say, you know, Aquarius is sort of decentralization. Capricorn is much more of a kind of unitary sort of structure that everybody slots into at different positions, whereas you know, Aquarius is much more, as you say, decentralized. And so in terms of both um, military, political power, and economic power, and, and then the kind of the financial system as well, uh, it is looking like there's going to be much more diversity and less centralization of financial and you know, economic military power. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So overall, that could be, you know, there's always positives and negatives, but I think overall that could be very positive for the world for there to be um, more of a decentralized power structure um, rather than a top down, do as I say, sort of sort of uh, structure. So that'll be very interesting to see how that all pans out. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, there's, I mean, there are, as you say, there's good things and bad things yeah. generally associated with any kind of system. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a we've had a system over the last um, f you know decades where the, the U.S.'s navy has basically guaranteed global trade, and we've had kind of booming trade all around the world, mm. uh, where we've had goods flowing um, across the oceans, and you know you can you can get kiwi fruit in iceland and you know sure. whatever you want right and i think we may be moving towards a time where that might break down to some extent yeah perhaps if if the u.s withdraws from from this role that it's played as kind of the guarantor of global trade and security then what's going to happen the world is probably going to fragment into different different zones and that would I think fit with the nature of the times, with Pluto moving into Aquarius, with more of a decentralized world. It may also be, in some respects, it could be a poorer world. Um, it might, it's certainly in some parts of the world. Mm. Um, if the, and it's, it's hard to, to say for sure, but some, some parts of the world are probably going to be, going, going to be negatively impacted by that. Mm. Um, with you know, less trade, going on you could imagine that there'll potentially be less prosperity in some parts of the world at least at least for, for at least initially hmm. um, but yeah so this sort of single unitary system that we've had um, I wouldn't be too surprised to see that coming to an end and that's not just something that I'm saying as an astrologer you know there's a lot of geopolitical uh, analysts like people like Peter Zion for example who's like very loudly um, and push this this message that that the, the globalized world we've had, particularly over uh, the last say three decades since the fall of the Soviet Union, seems mm. to be falling apart mm. right now. Yeah, I mean, with the supply chains collapsing, uh, semiconductors, um, the supply being extremely low. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of shifts. Um, it, it seems like one of one of the ways we're headed is for you know each country or each power structure to let's say uh, supply their own food so it might be more and more important to potentially grow your own food locally you know get to know the, your local farmers um, and, and and there are there are positive aspects of that where you you know things are a lot more local maybe we get to know our neighbors a lot better <laughs> Uh, you know, I grew up in a neighborhood where I didn't know any of my neighbors, like, ever. And uh, maybe maybe we're going to shift to uh, more local community structures. With, and when I think of Aquarius, I think of decentralized communities. Yeah, I think, I think you might be right with that. And that would, yeah. that would be, 
I think in many respects a, a change for the for the better. Um, getting to know the people in your community, um, and also having having produce uh, grown locally more. I, yeah. I don't I don't think many people would necessarily say that's a that's a bad thing. I think that has to be a good thing. Um, right now we have a system where there's a lot of energy expended on you know on uh, moving cargo around the world and you know yeah. fruits Fuel and vegetables and, and and things that could be grown locally are being you know as you, you know exported export, exported at, at great uh, expense and and that, pollution and, and pollution and all that stuff um, so so there there are probably uh, good things to be to be taken from from these developments it's like we we humans don't like things to change though generally yeah 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 so right. you know it'll right. maybe it's it's probably going to it's probably going to sting <laughs> it's yeah. a bit, the the shift but if you're if you if you're ready and you're expecting the shift it that kind of will take the, the sting out of things a bit and i think also just um trying to trying to keep that mentality of say, saying well yeah things are changing but things are also can be improved in this way or that's yeah uh, and taking the taking the the good elements of what what's changed and kind of focusing on those and perhaps yeah. um putting less emphasis on the the the, the loss and mm. the sort of sense of disjointedness which we might expect yeah and, and pluto is all about change so we are changing into a very new chapter here and so um, at least for me I like to, to move with the change and take actions that, you know, progress things forward and evolve towards that change. Um, but another thing is I think uh, sustainability will be another huge, uh, we're gonna see a lot of shifts with uh, everything, culturally, you know, uh, agriculture, farming, things like that, you know, uh, eating more locally, you know, I think is a lot more sustainable, um, coming together in communities and sharing resources is a lot more sustainable, working together, teaming up together. Um, so I think those are all gonna be major themes and... Uh, yeah, I think like new w forms of like social organization maybe, like yeah. sort of cooperatives and community organizations uh, could, I think, uh, really rise in this period of Pluto in Aquarius. There's, mm. you know, an empowerment of new centers and new new systems i think uh, which is really on the way um so i think that people will increasingly um, band together in new ways yeah uh, to support themselves to support their families to support their communities yeah and that that could be a really uh positive development because i think i think we're kind of we're all sort of crying out for that because this is more than perhaps ever before is also a bit of an age of alienation yeah, um, yeah. You know, with the the rise of uh, social media, smartphones, and, uh, and the internet, of course, they've brought some benefits. But at the same time, um, a lot of people are feeling, growing up, feeling alienated from yeah. from their fellows, and um, yeah. and I think a, perhaps a, a movement to counteract that uh, is also kind of timely. You know, every yeah. action has a you know, equal and opposite reaction, as they say, and so I think um, that people may uh, try to push back against the kind of the alienation that that does seem to accompany some of this networked technology um, mm. with new, as you say, forms of social organization. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, one thing I've been learning, uh, I know a lot of, I know quite a few uh, men's coaches actually who, who, who coach men on masculinity and things like that. And one of the, I think the top thing, the top pain point that I've heard from a variety of men's coaches is that men are dealing with loneliness. So like you're saying, alienation, um, I think is one of the biggest pain points in, um, yeah, in humanity or, or worldwide. Uh, so that is a major positive aspect is coming together more in communities, um, working together, things like that. Um, another thing that we want to talk about is uh, um, China and, and how the Pluto is going to affect China potentially. Right, right. 
Yeah, I mean, something, um, something that uh, a lot of astrologers have noticed um, is if you look at the, the um, natal chart that most people are using for China, the, the, the current Chinese state, and its birth in 1949, in that chart, um, Aquarius is the, is the rising sign, and the moon in that chart, which generally will represent the people in a, in a, in a country chart, is at mm. three degrees of Aquarius. It's really close to the start of Aquarius, um, which means that Pluto is going to conjoin the moon in the China chart um, pretty soon, uh, within the next few years. It's going to, there are quite a few countries that have moons in Aquarius, mm. but... Um, the Chinese chart, I think, has the earliest Aquarius moon. Now, what's that going to mean uh, for China? Uh, I would not be too surprised to see some really dramatic shifts there, potentially a kind of revolutionary situation or uh, a lot of unrest because um, Pluto, the planet of transformation, is conjoining the moon, which represents the people. Wow. So. You know, what could hap where could that come from? Um, the Chinese Communist Party, a lot of people talk about how it, it's, um, its legitimacy to rule is kind of based on all the prosperity that it's mm. delivered China, which it undoubtedly has done over the last, especially since 1980. Um, but if we, you know, the economic situation changes dramatically and there are a lot of signs that it, it probably will, what's that going to mean for China and what's it going to mean for the legitimacy of the, the Communist Party of China if it's no longer delivering um, mm -hmm. wealth and economic benefits to, to people in that country. So that's definitely uh, something to watch and something to be a bit you know, concerned about um, for you know, what's going to, going to happen there. Yeah, absolutely. Very interesting. So yeah, we got the US Pluto return, we got the Pluto's going to hit China in the next, probably in 2025, I believe around there and uh we also have pluto going over the the bitcoin jupiter um the second time on july 3rd and i think it's going to hit it a few more times over the next year and a half so we're going to see a potential transformation with bitcoin as well um could we see some more dumping or and then pumping or it'll be very interesting so uh, i think that's about it is there anything else you'd like to share <laughs> <laughs> well there's, you know, there is a lot of pretty uh, intense astrology coming you know, this yeah. this decade. Yeah. Um, right. We're going to see a lot of a lot of change, I think. Um, yeah. And in the next in the next few years, between now and th this decade, really is going to be going to yeah. be huge. And I, I think the world's going to look very different by the ends of it, and, and in, in lots of different countries as well. You know, Russia, for example, is another place that's. Um, likely to change but there's a saturn neptune conjunction happening in right. 2026 um, every time these uh these conjunctions happen there are big transformative events in russia you go back to 1917 you have the russian revolution you go to 1953 you have the death of stalin 1989 you have the, the fall of the berlin wall and then the collapse of the soviet union every time these conjunctions happen there are big changes in Russia um, it's a really clear pattern and you can even go back further in the 20th century um, in 2026 there's gonna be another one of these conjunctions um, and I really am expecting that there are probably going to be big changes there as well oh yeah um, yeah but yeah there's a lot there's a lot going on it's gonna be a pretty wild ride I think absolutely yeah thanks for mentioning that um, yeah because so r around 2026 we're going to see um saturn and neptune or is it yeah i think 2026 head into uh aries and yeah. then uh i think of, and then around 2027 we're going to see um most of the planets in air signs and fire signs right which uh is going to be a major transformation and things are going to speed up everything's going to speed up right right <laughs> yeah i mean i think uh 2025 it is uranus moves into gemini 
Oh yeah, right, right, right. Um, That's going to kick it off. Yeah. That, I think that will really Ooh. supercharge things. We have Pluto in Aquarius, air sign, Uranus, you know, planet of of the new and you know, revolution, yeah. and, uh, changing things up. Is 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 in Gemini, another air sign. Um, and as you say, yeah, things are going to start moving very quickly, and probably particularly in the technological yeah. sort of realm. I mean, it already feels like it's moving uh, pretty fast. So mm -hmm. uh, that time is going to be wild. Absolutely. So it's a good idea to prepare now. Prepare, get your ducks in order, prepare financially for the new financial changes because things are really going to speed up in uh, 2020 or potentially starts really speeding up in 2025. So we want to make sure we're, we're in alignment in our lives. We're, we're living where we want to live. We're, you know, financially we're, we're in a good place. And, and also we have good communities set up for ourselves. I think it's really important. Right, so. right. All right, well, thanks so much for coming on the show. And uh, everybody learn more about Dan. Um, where can they learn more about you? Uh, you can find me at World Astrology Report on YouTube and Substack. Uh, I have a channel where I cover world astrology um, and a lot of the things I've been talking about today, I've got videos on, so check it out. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much. And I'll put those links in the description box below where, that you can check out.